Um, before we start, if there are any questions, you can let me know. Okay, so if there are no questions, let me let me start. Yeah. So um, so last time we uh, we talked about structure theorem. So we saw the statement, and um, uh, so let's just recall what the statement was. So R is a principal ideal domain, and M is a finitely generated R module. Then we can say that M is isomorphic to R power k plus uh, R mod a one plus R mod a two up to R mod a n, where k is the rank of M, and a one to a n uh, are elements of R are non-zero non-units of R such that a one divides a two divides a three and so on up to a n. So here k and m are allowed to be zero. Yeah. Uh, so if k is zero, then m is torsion. If m is zero, then m is torsion free. And uh, if both are zero, then m is zero. So and last time we saw uh, we saw that uh, this proposition um, um, uh, will imply will imply the structure theorem. So we saw the proof of proposition implies the structure theorem. Where this proposition is essentially, uh, basically a restatement of structure theorem. So it follows more or less immediately from this proposition, the structure theorem. So R is a PID, F is a, a F be a free R module of rank N. So that means F is a free module uh, with a basis of length N. Let N be a, Submodule of F, then M is free. Uh, our module of rank, uh, some rank M less equals N. So that we already know that uh, if N is a submodule of F, then rank of uh, N is going to be rank of, uh, less, less than equal to rank of F. That is true for uh, general modules. Yeah? Because when you localize S inverse, N is going to be a subspace of S inverse F. Moreover, there is a basis x1 to xn of, but free is not clear. Yeah, free is something which will will prove. Uh, moreover, there is a basis x1 to xn of f and uh, a1 to am in R cross such that uh, a1 divides a2 divides am and x a1 x1 a2 x2 up to am xm is a basis of n. Of n. So here we are not uh, we are not demanding that AIs be non-units. Yeah. So some of the AIs may be units, um, but yet we can get our uh, structure theorem because uh, you know you ignore first few. Yeah. And then uh, the structure theorem falls through. So we saw uh, so roughly the idea. Of, uh, so how did we prove structure theorem from this one? So M is finitely generated. So you can get a surjective map, uh, the linear map from F to M and uh, uh, free module f uh, to m where uh, the rank of the free module will be a, a length of a generating set of n of, of m and then n you take it to be the kernel of this um, surjective or linear map yeah so then uh, uh, then now we can apply this uh, uh, we can use this proposition so we know that n is going to be free and uh, uh, we can find a basis x1 to xn of f such that uh, if you take the first m guys and multiply them by mm, these ais then it becomes a basis of n and then we know that uh, m is same m is isomorphic to f mod uh, kernel of this surjective map which is n so um, m is isomorphic to f mod n and this explicit nature of f and n gives us that uh, m is m is isomorphic to Rx1 mod A1x1, Ra1x1, Rx2 mod R, um, they have some Rx2 mod uh, Re2x2 and so on up to Rxm mod Raxm uh, plus uh, then the higher one is just Rxn plus one, R, they have some Rxn plus two and so on up to Rxn. Yeah, and then uh, if AIs are unit, then uh, these factor, uh, factor modules will be. Uh, zero, and uh, so uh, if and uh, if only those factor modules will, will survive for which AIs are, are non-units. They are already non-zero, yeah? and uh, the free part is same as uh, uh, is uh, R power n minus m. 
yeah, which is uh, which is basically the rank of uh, uh, rank of M because uh, remember uh, M is isomorphic to F mod N and we saw that rank of F is same as uh, um, so when this happens this this is probably one of the uh, maybe the homework law or something which we did uh, last to last class that the rank of uh, F is same as rank of uh, N plus rank of uh, rank of N. Yeah. Okay, so this is uh, so this proposition which uh, uh, implies structure theorem is what we have seen last time. So today we will uh, will see a proof of this proposition. Okay. Any any questions? Okay, so this is what we have done last time. So now to prove this pro proposition, uh, basically we we have to figure out what these AIs are. Yeah, and then. Um, uh, depending so so actually uh, I, I maybe I didn't mention it explicitly these AIs in the structure theorem are determined by the module M yeah so they are more or less determined up to units so if uh, you get another set of AIs with this property then uh, if, let's say AI primes then a, a one will be an associate of a one prime and a two will be an associate of a two prime and so. So this uh, up to associates, these are determined on, from the module state uh, itself. So it's sort of invariant. Okay. So so here also a one to a m. I mean here of course. Uh, um, yeah. So here also more or less a one to a m are determined once your f and n are there. Yeah. So it's sort of like uh, invariant. Uh, and um, these xi's are somehow. Uh, uh, will depend and uh, so there, there may be cho choices for x i's but a i's are more or less determined in some sense okay so you will see how yeah so uh, so i mean uh, uh, if you if we knew that um, uh, the theorem well, uh, if we knew the proposition uh, and we want to know what how to figure out a1 or how to figure out a m then you know what to do yeah so it's such um, so a1 is sort of uh, the in some sense the maximal guy maximal uh, so the ideal generated by a1 will uh, contain everything yeah a2 to am yeah, so somehow a, yeah so how to yeah so a1 is uh, uh, actually, from here you can see. So, uh, so if you want uh, a AM, for instance, so AM is the annihilator of the torsion piece, yeah, of the module. So that is one way of seeing that uh, here the AM is determined by by M itself. So AM is the annihilator of the torsion part, and then uh, um, uh, uh, so if you know the structure theorem, uh, you if you want AM minus one, you just uh, remove this AM factor from M, yeah, and then, uh, um, uh, yeah, so, yeah, so there, there are some choices involved then, yeah. But, uh, but anyway, it is, it is true. so at least you saw that EM is certainly determined from, uh, um, determined from M, yeah, and uh, maybe one can uh, argue a little better that then you can sort of recover em minus one and so on and so on. okay okay so let, uh, let's try to prove this proposition okay so um yeah so uh so if n in, in, so here n is a sub module of a free module of rank so f is basically r power n and uh, capital n is a sub module of f then if n is zero, then there's nothing to prove, yeah? And then of course n is a, a zero module by convention is free of length zero. And, uh, and then uh, you can take any basis of f and m, you have to take m to be zero. Yeah? And then this uh, last statement is vacuously true. Okay. So, so let's assume n is non-zero, okay? And uh, let's consider the set of, uh, uh, the set sigma to be phi n, where phi is a linear map from F to R. Yeah. So phi is uh, sort of uh, so phi n is going to be 
an ideal because phi n is going to be a submodule of r and every submodule of r is a is an r ideal so sigma is a collection of ideals of r and uh, since uh, r is noetherian the sigma will be, have a maximal element yeah uh, and let's say that maximal element is nu n okay so uh, i mean if uh, So let's uh, uh, for some some new which is which is r linear. Yeah. So uh, so what hap um, happens to uh, uh, so new so I mean instead of every time writing r linear I might just say new belongs to home f r. Yeah. Home r linear set of r linear maps from f to r is uh, denoted by this guy. So use that. Yeah. So note that uh, sigma, of course, is non-empty because there are uh, there, there are linear maps from F to R. Yeah, you know, for instance, you can take the projection maps or you know from three modules. There are plenty. Of, just decide where the bases go, yeah, and that will tell you. So there are many. In fact, uh, um, uh, since if you assume n is n is zero uh, is non-zero, then you can even find uh, something which uh, such that um, uh, uh, such that phi of n is non-zero. Yeah. So, so as I said, uh, nu n is uh, assumed to be a maximal guy in sigma. Yeah. And of course, uh, nu n is a principal is a principal ideal. Because uh, because every ideal in R is principal, yeah, it's a it's a PID. Okay, yeah. So uh, uh, so nu n is a principal ideal, and hence it's uh, generated by say a one. Yeah. So what uh, what it means is that uh, the ideal generated by a n is uh, nu n, which is same as a one R. Yeah. So, uh, so um, as I said, uh, uh, sigma contains non-zero items, so uh, uh, non-zero ideals. So a one has to be non-zero. A one is non-zero since uh, uh, we can. I mean, uh, you take pi i uh, from f to r i between one and n. Yeah, the f is r power n. Yeah, so you can take this. So these are projection maps, and uh, of course, pi i pi i n is zero for for all i will will imply will imply n is zero. Yeah. So if if the projection so if n is n is non-zero. Then of course one of the projection has uh, so it has to have one non-zero element and then uh, 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 that means one of the component has to be non-zero so that uh, pi i will pick out and that component uh, so if it's the ith component then pi i of n will be non-zero yeah so that tells you that uh, that, that if, uh, I mean sigma can consist of non-zero ideals as well yeah and since uh, a is uh, nu n is a maximal guy, so we um, so even uh, uh, so this uh, nu n is a non-zero ideal. So in particular, we can assume a one is non-zero. Yeah. So a one is non-zero, and uh, uh, a one is uh, nu of n. So there exists uh, x in uh, x in n such that nu of x is a1 yeah now uh, the claim is uh, so uh, i mean a1 is a maximal element it need not be maximum but uh, but uh, it has some nice property with respect to x so if you so uh, uh, so what you can see is that a1 divides phi of x for all 
phi in for all i linear map uh, phi from f to r okay so uh, of course uh, for phi equals nu a1 is equal to that so that is okay but uh, the, the maximality of uh, nu n will allow us to prove this okay so why is this true so proof so suppose um, um, so suppose uh, uh, suppose not or suppose uh, uh, so let's uh, so uh, yeah, maybe we will take the GCD of uh, these two. Yeah, so let D equals GCD of uh, so GCD exists in PID in general in UFD. So yeah, so suppose uh, phi x is some uh, phi is some uh, I linear map from F to R, and uh, you take D to be the GCD of uh, A1 comma phi x. So if we show that uh, no. So we want to show that D is same as A1. Yeah. So uh, so uh, D is the GCD. So what do we know? Uh, since we are in PID, we can write D to be some linear combination of A1 and Vx. Yeah. So D equals R times R1 times A1 plus R2 times V of X for some r1 r2 in r yeah so now uh, uh, you just take c a uh, new i linear map from f to r um, given by c of uh, c is equal to r times new r1 times new corresponding to this guy so i'm just trying to uh, get d as uh, phi of x yeah and uh, then that will tell you that uh, uh, so then uh, of course uh, a1 being maximal will te uh, tell you that uh, uh, new 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 n being maximal like uh, maximal in this collection will tell you that a1 has to divide t uh, so take c to be r1 new plus uh, r2 phi yeah then uh, this implies that uh, c of uh, c of uh, n contains uh, c of x equals uh, r1 nu x plus r2 phi x but nu x is a1 and phi x is whatever it is so you get this as same as t yeah. so cn contains d and uh, c is is a linear linear yeah so implies cn belongs to this uh, this collection of ideas um and uh, D being GCD and uh, uh, A1 belongs to uh, the ideal generated by D implies uh, uh, this uh, ideal generated by A1 which is nu n is contained in the ideal generated by D which is contained in CN. Yeah. Because uh, uh, because C N contains D. Okay, so this uh, this tells you by by max by maximality that tells you that uh, 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 that tells you. Uh, that this uh, I mean it, this can't happen yeah so this implies uh, uh, by maximality of nu n a1 equals in the ideal gender is equal to cn and in particular is equal to so everything in between are all equal 
uh, which implies uh, so uh, gcd of d and a1 uh, uh, so gcd of a1 and cx is a1 yeah so this implies a1 divides cx because the gcd divides both a1 and cx yeah. okay so that uh, that completes the proof of the scheme is that okay so so what we get is that um, a1 uh, sort of a1 divides every linear map uh, from f to uh, f to r so in particular it, it uh, a1 divides uh, a, uh, phi of uh, x for every linear map uh, phi from f to r so in particular a1 divides this uh, this projection pi i pi i x yeah any question okay Okay, so, so maybe I'll so. okay. So, um, so now, um, so. So A one divides pi i x. So that tells us what. So so let's say um, um, yeah. So uh, yeah. So maybe. Uh, Yeah, so I can write, uh, so X in this uh, standard basis will look like something, yeah? So I'm trying to sort of get uh, uh, some uh, some basis vector out of it, yeah? So, uh, so, so let uh, BI equals uh, pi I X, or i between one and n. Then what we can uh, we know is that uh, um, bi is uh, um, a i uh, a one times c i yeah i between one to n. I don't know if I needed bi. I basically need ci's. Okay. Because uh, yeah. So uh, for some uh, some yes, that's right. For some ci's in R. Yeah, because uh, a one divides pi i x for all i between one and n. So pi i's are the are the projection maps. Yeah. So maybe I should have written here pi i's pi i from f to r are projection maps. Projection maps. Projection are linear maps. Okay. So, uh, so we have that uh, bi is uh, so pi i x is same as a i c i for some c i is in R. Then what I can do is um, yeah. So, so I'll take x one to be um, so I want a one x one to be in n. Yeah. So, um, so. Um, so I want X to be basically, um, so uh, so if you think about it, if EIs are the basis, then summation uh, AI, CI, EI is X. Yeah? So from here, what you get is that, uh, 
So VIs are coordinates of uh, uh, coordinates of x with respect to the standard basis EIs. Huh? So note x is uh, summation VI EI, which is uh, which is same as uh, um, summation A1 CI EI, where EIs are uh, are the standard basis if you if we think of f to be r pollen yeah in the sense that uh, in, in uh, under this map pi i from uh, from f to uh, f to r e i will go to 1 and the rest of the basis vector will go to 0 yeah so pi i sends e i to 1 and rest to 0 so those are our e i's yeah so uh, so we have uh, this so uh, so basically uh, x1 should be so this is same as a1 times uh, summation ci ei yeah? i equals 1 to n so uh, what i claim is that x1 uh, so set, let x1 equals summation ci ei i equals 1 to n so I want uh, I want to show that x1 is a part of a basis of f yeah and a1 x1 uh, a1 x1 which is same as x is going to be a part of uh, of a basis of uh, of n and uh, then of course we will use induction to conclude everything uh, everything works out so so the claim so how do I show that? Uh, show this claim. So first, uh, so the, so this involves saying that uh, um, um, f is isomorphic or uh, maybe equal to. So everything is internal in some sense. F is equal to R x one plus something. Yeah. So um, x one. Um, yeah. Yeah, so plus, uh, Cardinal, cardinal new. Okay, so I'll uh, also this that uh, x one is x one is sort of a new new x is basically uh, new x is uh, you know, generated by a one. So that is the sort of the image part. The kernel part is not captured. Yeah. So so x one uh, on the n n piece. So on the f piece, r x one is the piece and kernel new. So we'll show this. So this is one claim, and the second claim is that n is uh, uh, so. Of course, the uh, one part is that is a one x one, yeah, which is same as uh, uh, so. This uh, this implies a one x one is equal to x, yeah, and uh, uh, it's direct sum of kernel new, so intersection n. Okay. So we will uh, we'll prove these two claim and from here uh, and then we will prove that n is actually free in uh, free in f by using uh, induction on rank of n and then uh, sort of complete the argument so that so remember we have to prove n is free and then we also have to cook up our basis yeah so we have started the basis with x1 and then um, we'll use induction somehow to finish the argument Okay, so let's just uh, first prove this claim. Does that make sense? Is everyone with me? Are there any questions? I was recording, right? Somehow I... 
Yeah, maybe accidentally I paused the recording. Okay. I hope I was recording. Okay, are there any questions? Okay, so hope not. Okay, so let's try to see this, yeah? So let, uh, let's take an arbitrary element of F. So let uh, Y be an element of F. Then uh, what can we do? We can write, uh, um, yeah, so, uh, mm. So I want to write it as uh, something in uh, X1 and uh, and then something in uh, so something in Rx1 and something in kernel of new, yeah. So yeah, so let's just try this out. So Y, I'll try to write it as new Y, X1. Yeah, so that's uh, uh, new Y is some element of uh, of R. So this makes sense. Uh, plus uh, something in the kernel of, uh, so, so, so of course I want it to be added up to Y. So what I'll do is just put Y minus new Y X1. So this is the standard uh, technique and I hope uh, this works out fine, yeah? So, uh, so of course, uh, so first I'll, I'll show that every element in F is a linear combination of some element in Rx1, which is a submodule of F, X1 being the element of F, and kernel nu is of course a submodule of F, yeah? So, so, uh, so this of course belongs to Rx1 by definition, and uh, what is uh, new of uh, y minus uh, new y x1? Well, uh, um, so uh, so by linearity of new, this is new y minus uh, new y times uh, new of x1 new y is an element of r, so that comes out. So what is new of x1? Uh, so let's try to figure out. So um, x1 is uh, summation ci ei, yeah? So new of, uh, new of x1 we don't know, but we know what is new of a1 times x1, yeah? New of a1 times x1 is, uh, so new x, is uh, same as new of a1 times x1, and this is uh, new of x we know is a1. Yeah, so that was uh, that was the choice of x. New of x is a1, right here. Yeah. So we know that a1 is uh, new of uh, x is same as new of uh, a1 times x1, but uh, so this is. Uh, this is same as saying um, this is a1 times new of x1. So this tells us that this implies that new of x1 is equal to one. Yeah, because, uh, because since a1 is non-zero. So if a1 is non-zero, then of course if we are in the integral domain. We uh, R is an integral domain. We can cancel out a1. So new x1 is, uh, um, is um, so since this happens, we get that the previous term is actually zero, yeah? So that uh, that tells you that this guy is in uh, kernel new, okay? So this implies that f is, uh, f is equal to rx1 plus uh, kernel new. So now we have to check that uh, the sum is indeed direct. So what do we have to check to say that this sum is direct? What does it mean that F is a direct sum of Rx1 plus kernel nu? Sir, intersection is empty. Yeah, 
not empty but zero yeah it has to have zero, yeah, uh, zero. Yes. Yeah. essentially empty yeah so intersection has to be zero so so let's just uh, take that so let uh, let uh, y belongs to rx1 intersection kernel new so we want to show that y is zero so this tells you so this tells us that y is r times uh, x1 for some r in r and uh, and um, it's also in kernel new so and uh, new of y is uh, is zero implies new of r x1 with is zero which implies r times new of x1 but new of x1 is one yeah is zero implies r must be zero since uh, since uh, new x1 is one yeah so we just saw that new x1 is one okay so that uh, which implies r y is zero okay so that uh, hence we get uh, on the first statement uh, so hence we have this uh, maybe let's call it first statement and this is the second statement so this implies and so on okay so this uh, this proves the first part of uh, the claim and then let's try to finish the second part so second part is also similar um, essentially the same technique uh, uh, so you know take uh, uh, y now um, maybe I'll make it thicker so now let's take y to be in uh, n yeah then again y we will try to write it as um, so last time we wrote it as new new y minus uh, new y x1 uh, new x1 so this time again maybe the same thing new um, new y times uh, a1 x1 plus uh, y minus new y times so a1 x1 is same as x yeah uh, but anyway since i have already let, written a1 x1 let me just write a1 x1 continue with a1 x1 now so of course uh, new of uh, y minus new y uh, a1 x1 is just uh, new y minus uh, new y minus uh, uh, new y and a1 I can pull out because they are elements of R. So new y um, a1 new x1, but uh, new x1 we saw is one. So this is equal to uh, uh, so this is not turning out to be zero. Yeah, so maybe I don't have to, so Y is in N, so I don't have to put A1, yeah, A1 automatically comes out. So let's just erase this part, A1. So I'll just take a new, um, so we'll have to show, and uh, I mean, a new of Y is going to be in A1 anyway, yeah, so I don't have to uh, worry about the first factor. Okay, so sorry, um, let's fix this. So new y times new x1. And again, uh, new x1 is zero, uh, is one, so this tells you that uh, this is zero since, um, since new, x1 is uh, is one okay 
So, so that uh, this implies uh, y minus uh, new y x1 belongs to kernel uh, kernel of new and uh, why does it belong to uh, so so now i'll show that um, so i also have to show that it belongs to n yeah but y belongs to n and if i show that uh, this uh, this first factor is in uh, r one x1 then uh, remember a1x1 is same as x and x is in n so this will belong to n so the difference is also in yeah so so, so enough enough to uh, so enough to show so new y x1 is in r e one x1 since r e one x1 equals rx is contained in n implies uh, and uh, and uh, and y is in n implies y minus uh, uh, new y uh, is in l okay so it will uh, it will not only show that uh, the first factor is is in r a1 x1 it will also show that the second factor is in kernel new intersection yeah so uh, and uh, that we already sort of argued so new y is belongs to new n yeah? since uh, since y belongs to n and this of course is uh, is same as a1 r yeah is generated by the ideal a1 so this in particular is a1 r uh, uh, that was the uh, uh, that was the choice of a, uh, that is how a1 was defined a generator of uh, un yeah, so this implies uh, new y is equal equal to um, new y belongs new y um, new y x1 belongs to a1 um, r x1 which is same as r a1 x1 now everything is committed to so there is nothing to worry about yeah makes sense everyone so this uh, the hence hence ah so this proves that uh, uh, and so this implies n is again uh, sum of these two guys r a one x one plus uh, kernel new intersection n and then one has to show that it's a direct sum yeah so that is the intersection is zero but uh, that also is uh, straightforward so say y belongs to the intersection r a one x one intersection kernel new intersection n so everything is so anyway this uh, this part doesn't matter because r a1 x1 itself is in n so um no, and this implies y is uh, some r a1 x1 for some r in r and uh, which implies uh, um and uh, and uh, it is in the kernel and new y is zero implies um, new of uh, r a1 x1 is zero but new of x1 is one so this is same as saying that new uh, uh, so this so this tells you this tells us that uh, uh, r a one times new x one is zero. So that tells us that r a one is zero in in r, but a one is non zero. So this implies r must be zero since a one is non zero. 
and uh, this tells us that uh, y is zero yeah so and, and hence we have two as well okay so that completes the uh, the proof of this claim okay so uh, so rx1 uh, so we uh, so we have that rx1 is um, is uh, so this is essentially saying that x1 is a part of a basis of it so i'll, I'll argue it out uh, in a bit but remember kernel nu is a submodule of f yeah so in particular it's going to be torsion free and so on and the rank of kernel nu is going to be less than the uh, rank of f in fact, the rank uh, is strictly less than, uh, is one less than because rank of F is uh, rank of uh, this first module plus the rank of the second module. And the rank of the first module is uh, is one. Rx1 is isomorphic to R, yeah, because X1 is uh, is some non-zero guy. So this is, uh, this is going to be isomorphic to R. So this has rank one. So this must have rank uh, exactly one less than rank of F, okay. Uh, uh, so first, let, let me argue that n is uh, n is free, yeah, and uh, and then we will uh, we will sort of uh, work out uh, the other part. So once we prove that n is free, then uh, and then we'll have to show that uh, uh, we have a basis x uh, x1 to xn of uh, f, and such that a1, x1, a2, x2, and so on are uh, uh, are a basis of n. Yeah. So there are two parts to it. Yeah. So uh, so uh, first thing is n. Um, so. Okay, so note that uh, uh, n n equals uh, what does it equal? N equals r a one x one plus uh, um, kernel new intersection n kernel new uh, intersection n yeah this uh, uh so maybe i'll i'll keep this one kernel u intersection n implies uh, and uh, x x is some non zero x, so remember new of x1 is 1 yeah so new x1 can't be zero uh, can't be zero element of the module and a1 x1 is also non zero yeah because x itself is non zero yeah? So, so this tells us rank of n is uh, uh, one plus rank of kernel new intersection n. Yeah. So now, um, now we apply induction on uh, on the rank of n. Induct on rank of n excuse me sir yeah sir should we do it on f because we do uh, still don't know that n is free yeah so now i'm trying to prove n is free yeah so n is some arbitrary submodule of f yeah we don't have any control over n yeah okay sir so so n is, n is some arbitrary module and uh, so we will induct on rank of n so if n is uh, so of course if uh, uh, um, uh, so if uh, so, we know that rank of n has to be bounded by rank of n. But uh, uh, say we know for all small rank of n, uh, we know the result that n is free. Then we want to prove that. Uh, 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 so for all uh, modules of rank less than uh, rank of n, we know that uh, that submodule has to be free. Then we want to show that rank n is itself. Yeah. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So, so note that, uh, so this implies, uh, so uh, this, uh, maybe this star implies rank of uh, kernel nu 
intersection n is uh, less than rank of n. Yeah. So first we are going to prove n is n is free, and then we will proceed. Yeah. Is strictly less than rank of n, and of course, uh, kernel new intersection n is uh, is a sub is is a submodule of f. Yeah. A submodule of f. Yeah. Hence, uh, hence by induction hypothesis. kernel nu plus intersection n is free, free or not, of, of uh, whatever the rank is, yeah, of rank, in fact, we know what rank is, it's rank n minus one, yeah, because uh, rank of this guy is precisely rank n minus one, yeah. Uh, so this uh, this implies, but n is a direct sum of uh, the, the first factor r also um, so also r a one x one is isomorphic to r yeah also r a one x one is isomorphic to r as r module. Yes. Uh, yeah, yes, okay, so this tells us that uh, n uh, is uh, equal to uh, is uh, is isomorphic. To, so n so n is direct sum of two free modules. Yeah, so and hence free. Hence, this implies n is free. As n is the sum of two free modules of um, uh, is isomorphic to uh, is direct sum of uh, R A one X one and um, uh, and cardinal new intersection n. Yeah. So kernel new intersection n is isomorphic to r power rank n minus one. Yeah, whatever that rank n is. I should have given it a name, number. Yeah, maybe m or something, because that is how it is in the statement of the theorem. So this is this is isomorphic to r power m minus one, and this is isomorphic to. Yeah. Sometimes my laptop starts acting up. Yeah, so this first uh, this first factor is isomorphic to R. The second factor in this direct sum is isomorphic to R power M minus one. So the direct sum is isomorphic to R power M. Yeah. So this proves that uh, mm, that N is free. Is that clear? Yeah. So once we have N is free, uh, so that means uh, what we have what we have shown is that every Every submodule of uh, of F is free. Yeah. So the, and there was no other hypothesis on on the statement here on n. Yeah. N is some uh, submodule of F. Then we we prove that n is n is free. Okay. So so every submodule of uh, of F is free. Now now I'll I'll apply induction on on. on um, on n, uh, on uh, little n, so rank of it, yeah. to conclude uh, the second part of the theorem. Yeah. Now, for the remaining part, part, uh, we induct on n, which is rank of f. Okay, so uh, so now uh, note that uh, kernel new 
plus uh, r x1 equals uh, equals f yeah so not r but f this is the internal direct sum from the clean yeah so this tells us that kernel new is a uh, uh, rank of kernel new is uh, f which is of rank n yeah so this tells us that uh, rank of kernel new is n minus one yeah and kernel new being a submodule of f is free because that's what we prove every submodule of f is free and kernel new uh, is free because uh, uh, we we already showed that every submodule of f is free by, by uh, since 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 we showed every submodule of f is free yeah so that part we have already showed. Uh, so this implies uh, uh, kernel new is free of rank n minus one. So by uh, and uh, and and an intersection kernel new is contained in kernel new as as our submodule so now we can apply uh, apply our uh, induction uh, induction hypothesis yeah so uh, so by uh, by induction on uh, on n we know that uh, kernel new will have a basis of uh, uh, consisting of x2 to xn yeah so uh, a basis of length n minus 1 so 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 by induction hypothesis um, kernel uh, kernel new has a basis x2 to xn and there exists a2 to am in r such that uh, so note that n intersection kernel new has rank of precisely m minus 1 yeah uh, where m um, so this uh, this we argued here yeah m minus 1 rank m minus 1 so so there exists uh, m minus 1 elements a2 to am in r such that a2 x2 to amxm is a basis of uh, an intersection kernel new yeah so uh, so now we are applying induction hypothesis with uh, with f equals kernel new and n equals an intersection kernel new yeah, so uh, so now f has a smaller rank, uh, one less than uh, the, uh, the the original f, and uh, this is a submodule. So we have uh, we have this uh, uh, this conclusion. But from here we know that uh, see f is basically R x one plus kernel new direct sum of kernel new. So x one to x n is a is a so this implies x one to x n. So this is just vector spaces. X1 to Xn is, uh, uh, or rather, vector space kind of um, um, concepts is a basis of F because F is kernel new plus R X1, and uh, it, so the only thing missing in N from uh, uh, other than uh, an intersection kernel new is uh, r a one x one yeah but r a one x one is just r r r x yeah so so that's okay a one x one is already in in n so we get and a one x one from a two x two a n x n 
is is a basis of n. So the, these two are from the claim, uh, this claim which we proved. So maybe I'll I'll just make a give this claim some some. There are two claims. So yeah. So from claim this claim one and two. So claim start. So these two for uh, the statements follow from claim start. Okay, and that completes the proof. So I did warn you that it's sort of a longest proof, yeah. Sir, I have a question. Yeah, tell me. Uh, where did we prove that uh, the divides part, A1 divides, A2 divides? Ah, oh, oh, sorry, sorry, yeah. Ah, oh, so that part is still remaining, yeah. So, and in the induction hypothesis, you only assume that A2 to AM are just non-zero non-units. Yeah, so here we can, we can, we'll just assume that, uh, uh, I mean, uh, R cross, non-zero, uh, uh, not non-units, not just non-zero, yeah? So that is the statement of this thing. So, but we can, uh, I mean, uh, we can assume here that A2 divides, A3 divides, yeah? So all I have to do is show that A1 divides each of them. Then we'll be done. Okay, sir. Yeah. So yeah, good point. Yeah, so uh, this division thing we haven't proved. Okay. So okay, so maybe maybe I'll rearrange it. Uh, so let's take five minutes break. Uh, it's already twelve thirteen. Okay, so let's take uh, three uh, four minutes break. I'll rearrange it here so that we can see, and then uh, we'll prove uh, prove the uh, division part, and that will be the end of the class. Yeah, so it will take what, two two three more minutes. So let's take uh, five minutes more. Yeah. So okay, so so let's complete the the. Uh, remaining part. So we want to show that um, A2, etc. Uh, so A1, if if we show that A1 divides A2, then we are we are more or less good. Yeah. So, uh, that will complete. The, uh, so A1 divides A2 and uh, and so on. Yeah. So what was A1? Remember A1 was. Um, um, uh, so so so. A, A1 was the maximal guy in this set, yeah. So, so sigma we took as uh, um, Pn, phi um, in home fr, yeah. So uh, similarly, A uh, and uh, and A1. Uh, was um, uh, so a one the ideal generated by a one is is the maximal guy of uh, is is the maximal element of maximal element of of sigma yeah. So similarly, uh, uh, what will be A2? A2, so I mean, sort of induction uh, works, uh, the way induction works is, we'll apply the same uh, same principle to this uh, new submodule kernel new, yeah? So how will A2 be? A2 is uh, such, A2 is such that uh, the ideal generated by A2 is, uh, is, uh, is going to be is um, ma is the maximal element of uh, uh, this collection phi n uh, n intersection kernel nu instead uh, where phi is some linear map from kernel new to R. Yeah. So A2 is, uh, A2 is going, and the ideal generated by A2 is going to be some maximal element of this guy. Yeah. 
So say so so say this A two comes from some new two. So new two is uh, a linear map from kernel new to sir, yes. Sir, we already proved that A one divides uh, phi x one. So we just set up just set up a map phi such that phi x one is equal to it. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. So we can use the claim directly. Right? So you have to cook up a map. So I'm trying to cook up that map. Okay. Yeah. So new. See the point is. So we have a map. Uh, um, ah. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. But A two is going to be. So I have to cook up a map such that uh, A two is uh, P two of X or something like that. Yeah. Uh, then only we, we just look at the basis, right? So we just they are always like this. Yeah. So um, yeah. So I don't know how you are trying to. Uh, so what is the argument? So we just have to specify where the basis elements go. So we just send uh, x one to a two and other elements to anything else. Uh, x uh, yeah so you're saying ha huh, maybe maybe this is uh, this is shorter yeah so maybe um yeah so maybe this this description is not uh, particularly important so but uh, yeah something is needed so let's let let me just see so what you're saying is uh, but this description may be important yeah so let me just uh, A two is the maximal element of this uh, guy, uh, and um, so let me cook up one one map. Um, so so A two is yeah, but I think uh, we, I need some sort of description. Otherwise, uh, how do I make sure? So A two is. Uh, 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 new two of uh, 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 new two of n intersection kernel new. So maybe maybe one can do without this. So now what uh, we can uh, so we we take phi uh, r linear map from f to f to r, which sends uh, let's say x one to Um, uh, so you're saying I, I send x1 to a2, yeah? But I want to send, uh, but uh, uh, this doesn't help, huh? How will this uh, complete my argument? And uh, x, where do I send x2 to? So I, I, but I also want phi of x to be, to be a1. Then only I can say that uh, a1 divides uh, p of x to be to be a2. So I have to send x1 to yeah maybe this is okay. Yeah. So p of x1 I'll send it to and then so so I want p of x to be a2. Yeah. So, uh, so I sent x1 to be to where? So I don't know where to send x1 to. If I knew that, uh, yeah, so the, the, the argument becomes sort of cyclic. Yeah, uh, do you see the problem? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. So let's try to, so there is a, one has to do something, yeah. Otherwise, uh, I mean, uh, one has to use some property of A two, yeah. But um, yeah. So, but anyway, so if, if a new two is such a map, then we can next uh, get a map. Uh, New uh, new from new to 
so uh, maybe new to tilde from f to r which sends um, so i can uh, so we know what happens on kernel new yeah so such that new to tilde restricted uh, 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 so f f remember is same as uh, if you remember is same as uh, rx1 plus kernel new yeah so on kernel new it's just uh, new to so new to new to tilde uh, uh, new to is a map from uh, kernel new to r yeah so uh, so on kernel new it is just new to on on x1 I'll, i can put whatever i like yeah so maybe i'll put x on x1 i'll put uh, zero yeah so and new to tilde of x1 is zero and uh, new to tilde uh, restricted to kernel new is new to okay so new to tilde is a map uh, from in home fr yeah so this tells us that uh, um, um, uh, this tells us that new to uh, so what I'm trying to say is that the set is sort of uh, so I want to argue that a2 is uh, going to be um so i'm trying to say that uh, uh this uh, and the maximal element in this set is going to be smaller than the maximal element in in sigma so this uh so the here, image, yeah so, so the image of this new to tilde would be uh, the same as a2 yeah so new to tilde of and it's uh, n is uh, is equal to new to of uh, an intersection kernel kernel new uh, so new to tilde is of course r linear yeah because uh, on the first vector we have decided what it will be and uh, it's a free module so it's okay yeah you can is same as this and uh, this implies that uh, um, the maximal so a2 uh, uh, the maximal element in this is going to be smaller than the so same price uh, no, so there's still some problem um, so what we know is that uh, Could you please tell where the problem is actually i think this would work because new to tilde is actually uh r linear homomorphism from yeah, f to one no a1 is maximal yeah yes uh, but it's not maximum so so one has to argue new new restricted to kernel new it's a pid so, uh, so maximum and maximal won't they be equal No, no. I mean, in PID, there are uh, many maximal ideals. Yeah, there is no unique maximal ideal. Yes. Sir. Yeah. So there is. Uh, yeah. So so that's why I have to argue a little bit. Yeah. So, um. Yeah. So one has to be a little careful.
Okay, so what is the issue? So I want to Yeah, so basically, yeah, so now I know how to fix it. So uh, remember, new uh, is some map, yeah? And uh, so uh, you cook up this map. Um, uh, new to tilde, uh, maybe let's call it mu, yeah? So mu uh, uh, on uh, 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 from Rx1 plus final new, yeah? So, uh, so on Rx1, it is just, uh, yeah, so I should take uh, mu to be, mu of uh, x1 to be same as uh, new x1, okay? And on, uh, on kernel new, I take it to be, to be new to the maximal it takes, yeah? Okay, then uh, uh, on, sorry, uh, and uh, on and uh, mu restricted to kernel new is uh, new to okay then uh, uh, then uh, now it's okay so then mu is uh, is i linear New from F to R is R linear, yeah, and uh, mu of n uh, contains uh, mu of uh, a1 x1 because a1 x1 is is x, yeah, um, which uh, uh, con contains mu of a1 x1, which is same as new of uh, a1 x1. Because on on this factor R x one it is it is uh, same as new which is uh, which is a one yeah so this is uh, a, and this is a one x one is x and uh, because a one x one is x or new of x one is one yeah that is how uh, uh, the integer part that is yeah so this is a one so this implies that uh, 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 that uh, the ideal generated by a1 is contained in uh, new n, but uh, a1 is maximal, yeah? So it can't be contained in something uh, bigger. So this implies that uh, uh, it, the ideal generated by a1 is equal to uh, new n. But of course, uh, the ideal generated uh, new n contains, um, contains, uh, uh, mu to mu to kernel kernel new yeah because uh, uh, mu restricted to kernel new was uh, mu to yeah so this implies the and uh, this of course is uh, by assumption a2 so this implies a2 it belongs to the ideal generated by a1 which is same as a1 divides a2 okay yeah, so I think I made it more complicated. So I'll, I'll erase uh, parts which I don't need. So mu2 tilde definition, I don't need. So those things I'll uh, erase, but uh, this is the argument. Is this clear now? Of whoever are remaining in the class? So what we do is uh, on x1, we define it to be uh, new and, uh, uh, and on kernel new, we define it to be um, uh, so on on Rx1 we define it to be new restricted to Rx1, and on kernel new we define it to be the uh, define it to be mu2. And uh, once we define these two R linear maps on these uh, on these two pieces, then we get our linear map from this to this. Yeah. So uh, so more explicitly, mu of uh, uh, some uh, uh, Rx1 plus uh, alpha. So any element here can, can be uniquely written as R times X1 plus alpha, where alpha is in kernel new, is just uh, new R times new X1 plus uh, 
uh, mu two mu two alpha. Okay, that is the linear map we are looking at. Okay, and uh, and then uh, from there we we get uh, this thing. Okay, I hope this is clear. And if there are any questions, please let me know. Okay, so if there are no questions, then uh, maybe I'll stop and I'll clean up uh, part of this and then post the proof. Okay, so.